The story Jesus tells of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16 has become one of the staple Bible passages in supporting the idea of a place of eternal torment for unbelievers in the Christian faith. But if we take a closer look at this story, read it in its context, and compare it with the rest of Scripture, it actually becomes apparent this is not what Jesus is trying to teach. Here's two reasons why. Firstly, the story of the rich man and Lazarus is actually a parable. Parables were made up stories, folk stories, fairy tales, commonly known by the people back in Jesus' day. They were not true stories or events. Jesus would often use these common folk tales to illustrate or explain spiritual truths. How can we be sure this story is a parable, not a true story? Matthew 13, 34 says that Jesus did not ever teach without using a parable. This is actually one of five stories Jesus tells back to back, starting in Luke 15. Now the four stories before this story, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son, and the shrewd manager are all well accepted to be parables. So it stands to reason that the story of the rich man and Lazarus is also a parable. It doesn't make sense for Jesus just to randomly throw a true story into the mix after telling four parables back to back. In fact, every story Jesus told was a parable. He never used real stories. So if this story is a true story, it would be the only one Jesus ever told, which wouldn't make any sense. Historic rabbinic literature shows us there was about six different versions of this parable circulating at the time of Jesus. In other words, this was an already well-known parable, folktale, a made-up story in Jesus' day. Jesus isn't telling a true story of actual events that they've never heard. The second reason Jesus can't be teaching about eternal torment is that the concepts in this story don't line up with the rest of scripture. Being rich doesn't get you damned, neither does poor get you eternal life. Accepting or rejecting Jesus isn't even mentioned as part of the reason for why the rich man and Lazarus end up where they do. Believers do not go to the bosom of Abraham when they die, but to the presence of the Lord. The Bible is clear that those who died and went to Hades could not speak as the rich man did to Lazarus in the story. Psalms 88 verses 10 through 11 says, Will you perform wonders for the dead? Will the departed spirits rise and praise you? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Now the answer to that is no, you can't speak. Psalms 115 verse 17 says, The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down into silence. And lastly, most would disagree and be appalled at the idea that those in heaven can see people in a place of suffering, which would include any of their loved ones who didn't make it. Nor does the rest of scripture support such a concept. These concepts are not scriptural. They are actually from pagan mythology, from the ancient Greeks, Romans, Persians, and Babylonians. This parable came from these pagan concepts the Jews had learned while being in captivity under the Babylonians and the Persians. Jesus is not teaching about what happens in the afterlife by using this story. He's using a folk tale, a made-up story with made-up concepts derived from pagan mythology that was commonly known to the people back then to illustrate spiritual truths so they could understand. So what truth is Jesus teaching when he told this story? In light of the context of this parable, which I'll explain shortly, I do not believe Jesus is teaching about what happens after people die, but about the role reversal of the apostate Jews who rejected Jesus and the Gentiles. I believe Jesus is teaching about the apostate Jews, specifically the religious leaders who rejected him, losing their covenant relationship with the Lord, being on the outside of the kingdom of God, and the Gentiles having covenant relationship with the Lord, and being on the inside of the kingdom of God. Here's five reasons why. Reason one, this parable is actually part of a group of five parables Jesus tells back to back starting in Luke 15. In Luke 15 verses 1 through 3, we see Jesus is eating and drinking with the Gentiles and sinners. The Pharisees and religious leaders show up, get angry and complain. It's at this time Jesus starts on these five parables. So the Pharisees and the unbelieving Jews and the Gentiles are the subject and focus of Jesus' parables, including the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Reason number two, the rich man in this story is clothed in purple and fine linen. He is rich, he loved wealth, he didn't care about those less fortunate. 
The Pharisees were also very wealthy, loved money. They were corrupt and didn't care about those less fortunate. In fact, right before the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Jesus is warning the Pharisees about the evils of the love of money. We see the Pharisees scoff at his warnings in verse 14, and then Jesus tells them this parable. Reason number three, the rich man has five brothers. Now, I think Jesus purposefully added the mention of five brothers here as a clue to who the rich man was. The priesthood of the Old Covenant Mosaic Law, the most respected Jews, were from the tribe of Levi. Levi was one of six boys from Jacob's wife, Leah. Levi had five brothers. The Old Covenant priesthood were direct descendants of Levi. So when Jesus says the rich man has five brothers, his audience probably knew exactly who he was talking about. Reason number four, a theme throughout scripture is that the kingdom would be taken away from the apostate Jews who rejected Jesus and given to the Gentiles who accepted him. The Jews had the law of God, the covenant relationship with him. He was known to them. Psalms 146 verse 20 says no other nation had his laws. And in Jesus' day, the Jews were trying to keep everyone else out. But now when their own Messiah came to them, the Son of God, they rejected him. So Jesus warns them the time was coming when the Gentiles would be on the inside of covenant and those who rejected Jesus as their Messiah would now be on the outside of covenant. Matthew 8 verses 11 through 12 says, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, these are the Gentiles, and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom, in other words, those who are currently in the covenant kingdom, they will be cast out into outer darkness. They will now be on the outside. So the Gentiles are going to be on the inside, while the apostate Jews will be cast out on the outside. Matthew 21 verse 31, Jesus talking to the Pharisees says, Truly I say to you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you. Matthew 21 verse 43, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees again says, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. We have the parable of the marriage feast in Matthew 22 verses 1 through 9, where the original guests the king invited refused to come, and so then the king invites others to come to the wedding instead. We have the parable of the prodigal son, where the sinful rebellious son came into the father's house, while the obedient but resentful son stayed on the outside of the father's house. And lastly, reason number five, the beggar is called Lazarus. From what I know, the way the parable was normally, the beggar didn't have a name. Jesus added this name to the story himself to identify who the beggar in the story represented. As for why he was called Lazarus, the Hebrew name for Lazarus is Eliezer. The story of Abraham was well known among the Jews. And in Genesis 15, we read that Abraham had a servant named Eliezer who was in line to receive an inheritance from Abraham. But he did not because he wasn't of Abraham's physical bloodline. The inheritance went to Isaac instead, because he was of the physical bloodline. The Jews, especially the religious leaders, had thought they were better than everyone else, and only they could have access to God, because they were of the physical bloodline of Abraham. But all that was about to change. John the Baptist told the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 3 verse 9, Do not suppose that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children to Abraham. Paul says in Romans 9 verses 8, Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily children of God. Only the children of the promise are considered to be children of Abraham. And Paul said in Galatians 3.29, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Paul is saying the physical bloodline soon won't matter. If you are in Christ, you are now children and heirs of Abraham and can partake of the covenant and the kingdom of God. So now we see in this parable the rich man resembling the Pharisees, those of the physical bloodline of Abraham, is the one on the outside, while Lazarus, Eliezer representing the Gentiles, is on the inside of covenant, receiving the inheritance of the kingdom of God. Now you may ask, what about the torment in Hades? Well remember, Jesus is using an already existing made-up story with already existing made-up concepts 
to illustrate a spiritual truth and spiritual concepts. The torment in Hades represents something. In verse 25, Abraham says, Child, remember that during your life, you received your good things and likewise Lazarus bad things. But now he is being comforted here and you are in agony. So Abraham is saying that the roles have been reversed. What you had, Lazarus is receiving, and what Lazarus had, you are receiving. So what the Pharisees had that the Gentiles are receiving is Abraham's bosom. What the Gentiles had that the Pharisees now have is the torment in Hades. So the Pharisees had covenant with the Lord, but now the Gentiles did. The Gentiles were outside of covenant, but now the Pharisees were. So being in covenant is Abraham's bosom, and being on the outside of covenant is the torment in Hades. I hope this helped shed some light on this story. Be sure to check out my other videos talking about hell and eternal torment. I'm Micah Stevens. God bless. Thanks for watching.